Welcome, everybody. We got a full house. We're going to give everybody a minute or two to get settled. Just give us, like I said, give me about one more minute. We'll get into some relatively quick introductions, some quick housekeeping notes, and then dive into the, uh, the content itself, which happens to be about my favorite thing to talk about in this world, because I think it's uh, this little niche world of ours, because I think it's one of the most re rewarding parts of the process when we do it right and it goes well. So I'm um, looking to share our expertise and experience with everybody tonight, and I hope it results in more money from these colleges. Because I'm telling you right now, you guys need that money more than these colleges. I know that from experience as well. So that's what we're hoping to do. Just reallocate some of these funds is the goal. And yeah, so this is being recorded, right? So this is being recorded like most, just about all of our presentations, everybody that registered will get the recording tomorrow along with the slide deck. And we'll make sure that you know how to interface with us moving forward. The other thing of note here, like we usually do, for those of you that um, uh, have followed along with us before, we give some special offers and giveaways and discounts to reward our live attendees. And tonight will be no different. But the uh, the last thing we'll wrap on is some, some things that we can do to help you specifically with this part of the process. How do we go back to these colleges and get more money than whatever these initial offers look like? Again, I, a fair amount of content to cover tonight, important piece of the puzzle. So I want to leave really most, most of our time for that by way of, again, relatively quick introduction for those of you that have not Seen me before. My name is Matt Carpenter. I'm here representing College A Pro tonight. I'm one of the founders here. I've been doing this coming up, creeping up very closely on two decades, which is my spans my entire career. So this is the only thing I know. That's the bad news. The good news is I think I know it pretty good. I, I would like to think. So I've been through the ringer many times and have worked with thousands and thousands of families, just been and have guided them through this process. And like I mentioned, right at the top of all the parts of this process, of which there are many, as you guys are experiencing firsthand, this is, I think, the most rewarding. This is the funnest part, dissecting these awards and figuring out how do we go back and get some more money. And before I introduce Chuck here, just tell us, number one, where you are in the country. We always like hearing that. We're very geographically diverse. And then tell us, I, I think, just about everybody's class 2023. So I'm going to assume that if you're not the class 2023 or the student, tell us what year your kid is. Ipswich, Mass. That is the birthplace of American independence, Chuck. You probably don't know that. Both of my hometown. My parents are still in Ipswich out on the neck, whoever that Ipswich person is. And as you can see, we got all... Coast represented. We got North, we got South, we got uh, everywhere in between. That's what we like. And then and I'd impressive. also like to see what are some of the colleges that you've been accepted to or are waiting on acceptances? Who do we want to focus on for the particular colleges? Who do we want to get more money out of? Pitt, Fordham, Wesley, and New Chicago, USC, Virginia Tech, go Hokies. Okay. And again, kind of everything in between. For you Virginia Tech folks, if there's any football fans there, my brother is on, on the staff there. So if you're interested in <laughs> You can ping me on the side. Okay, this is great. Yeah, yeah. And we always love seeing this and keep it coming. And we're going to try to make it as interactive as we can tonight. I am up here, as I mentioned, north of Boston. And nowadays, I live in a town called Beverly, Mass. I'm in my office right now in Salem, Mass. Chuck is joining us from deep in the heart of Texas, down in Houston. And we're fortunate to have Chuck tonight. I uh, let him know really last minute, asked if he could join me. We had to switch presentations at the buzzer here. And Chuck is somebody that uh, I personally have sought out to try to get him to be a part of our team for quite a while. And perseverance and patience eventually paid off because Chuck's a financial planner down there in, in Houston. And it's very hard to find good financial planners that also understand this college niche because it's its own beast. So when I can find those that we check both boxes, I want them on my team. Super, super grateful to have them. And he's got a ton of experience in this space. And for the most part, he's going to be manning the Q&A tonight, answering all your questions. We won't get to all of them, guys, because we got a huge crowd tonight, but we're going to do our very best. And again, we won't leave you hanging. We'll make sure you know where to find us beyond tonight. But Chuck, if you want to say hello, please do, and then we'll get it cooking. 
Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm down here in Houston, Texas. And for those of you in stormy weather right now, hang in there. We have 80 and 90 degrees, and I played 18 holes of golf with my daughter on Saturday and got sunburned. I don't know if that makes you feel any better or worse. I want to say thanks to Matt for including me on this. He he gave me a very generous introduction. He's been a mentor to me and uh, helped me along the way. I'm only five years into studying this stuff, but hopefully I can add some insights. I'll do my best to answer questions as we go. On the q a i'll be typing in answers answering some of them live if you do have questions please make sure and put them in the q a and not the chat like the chat you can use for kind of other things but for the actual questions if you expect or want an answer please make sure and use the q a section yeah great call yeah great thanks appreciate that and then everybody can benefit from that there as well okay let's let's get cooking and again chuck's selling himself short a little bit down there this guy is a truck you don't you, you, mm. this isn't the best picture of you it's fine but unfortunately we don't have peggy here tonight we have to settle for a truck down there suffering down in the 85 degree weather but okay so listen for those of you that have not already i firmly recommend create your mycap account excuse me create your mycap account even if you just do the free version and i'm going to show you just in a couple of minutes here why that's important for this part of the process because Number one, we're going to help you translate these offers, right? For those of you that have got a decent amount of acceptances and financial aid award letters, you're probably experiencing what I promise you everybody experiences, and that is these are confusing. I don't really know what I'm looking at here. What's free money? Can I expect this to be here for four years? Is this a one-year deer? What's the school actually going to cost me? Ultimately, that's what I want to know. And they do not make it a very transparent in most cases. So if you haven't already, and Chuck, if you would, just put this, our link in the chat here, but create yep. your account, mycap.collegeaidpro.com. That'll allow you to upload your award letters. We can translate them for you, number one. And number two, which I'll kind of tease here, we're going to be able to tell you, how did you do, right? Can we go back to this particular college and do better? Okay. So again, the first piece of the puzzle is actually understanding these offers. And there's a couple of just terminology things I want to get you comfortable with. Now, generally speaking, when we see the word grant, we should feel excited because that means it's free money. Okay. But in most cases, this is tied to your family's financial situation. So it's based on the FAFSA, based on the CS profile, based on your EFC. Okay, and based on how this college does business, anytime we see a dollar amount and the word grant associated with it, we can have a fair amount of confidence that's tied to our financial situation. The reason why that's important is because it could vary from one year to the next, right? And we have to reapply for financial aid each year. So if our in our base income year 2021, our income was lower and it's going to go up or it went up in 22 and it's going to go up in 23, there's a reasonable expectation that our need-based grants could go down. So we should be aware of that and of course, vice versa. Whereas if it's a scholarship, that's great, right? Free money, same deal, call it whatever the hell you want as long as we we don't have to pay it and it's just a, a discount. But the, the reason why the vernacular matters a little bit there is that scholarships, generally speaking, we can count on it being there for all four years if it's coming from the college. Now, usually the student has to maintain a minimum GPA in order to guarantee that. But generally speaking, when we see a $10,000 scholarship, I can set my watch to the fact that's going to be there for all four years again, so long as a student maintains this minimum GPA. Okay. Work study can be a little bit confusing. and You might even say misleading in the sense that oftentimes when these are offered in a financial aid award, it appears as if, number one, it appears as if we're guaranteed to get that, right? Which we are not. It's telling us that we have the potential to receive this dollar amount in a work study if we in fact get a job that we have to apply for when we go on campus but it's not deducted from the bill they're just giving you a, an estimated dollar amount that they think the student might be able to earn over the course of a year okay but it's not deducted from the bill and again that's generally speaking pretty confusing and then the last way that you're going to see financial aid offered is via loans okay the federal direct student loan Every student is entitled to borrow up to $5,500 their freshman year of college, and it goes up a little bit each year. In most cases, you're going to see that included in every award. Sometimes they'll include parent awards or, sorry, parent loans in there as well. 
which again, I think this should be illegal, quite frankly, because it's very deceiving and misleading because it, it appears as if it's free money coming off of your bill, but it's a loan that you're going to have to pay back at a decent interest rate. Again, from a terminology standpoint, I just want to set the stage there. Now, these are a couple different examples of actual award letters. I'm not going to unpack each of these. What we're trying to coach you up on here is the fact of to illustrate how different each of these awards are presented, right? So this is UC Davis, and you can see that, okay, here's my sticker price, and here's what my EFC was, but then they're saying the estimated financial aid, but of the financial aid, 50, or all of it is in the way of a loan, right? The federal direct student loan of 5500 and a $50,000 $50, plus loan. But for many people, they look at this and say, I have a full scholarship, right? My re remaining cost is nothing. And as I'm drilling down on it here, you might be like, that's very obvious. It's saying loans. I promise you, it, it's not that obvious to many families. So that's one way that, that an award can be uh, displayed. Here's us pointing out the granular details, right? Here's the University of Denver, just completely different setup. And again, a little bit hard to know what's what and ultimately figure out, okay, what am I going to have to pay here? I think they do a better job of illustrating that, but again, can still be confusing. And again, just a, another completely different layout at an Occidental College versus a Whitman, who I think a Whitman specifically does a really good job in buying what the deal is. Okay. So before I go on there, what I want to do is showcase, let me just jump into our platform here so I can show you how this works. Hey, Matt, and then while you're in the platform, if you can click into any of the schools and show what the average merit award is for a school and where they can find, that's a question that's come in. That's a great call. So one thing for those of you that have set up your accounts, this is your home dashboard here. This is where everything lives and you can pop any school in there. But one thing, especially this time of year that we want to be taking a close look at is if I again click into a school here, I'm picking on Santa Clara and we're projecting what this particular family, we would expect them to receive in need-based financial aid and or merit-based scholarships. And you'll see we have all the scholarships that they offer and we're projecting how much this student's actually gonna get. And there's a couple things I would encourage you to look at. Number one, you can get a little bit of context in terms of the why. If you click on the admissions button here, here's the average GPA. Here's the average test scores. Here's how my kid stacks up. And that usually, again, gives some context as to, okay, here's why we're projecting X amount in a scholarship, if anything. Another thing that I think is really important is that if we click on this financial aid tab, I'm going to say, okay, what is their average scholarship that they give? And they give, in this case, it's $15,000 and change. Anytime we actually get a figure that's below, that's grounds for an appeal. That's something where we can push back on that college and say, hey, you gave us less than you typically give on average for a merit-based scholarship. So that's something that we'll talk about, but that's a great question. Thank you for flagging that. And that's how, how and where you'll find that information. But where I was going, obviously, I showed you all those just a handful of different ways that colleges will present these financial aid award letters. We're trying to take the guesswork out of it. Okay, so what we do is that if you just go to add your offer here. Okay, so you type in whatever college you've received an offer from. Okay, in this case, I'll just say, or was another one I can say, I think we have Bard in here. Okay, so I got accepted to Bard, and then I want to upload that financial aid award letter. Hopefully it's here. Oh, there we are. Okay, and then I click this translate offer letter. Now, we were really fortunate to be able to hook up with a kind of a, an arm of the Gates Foundation that's really focused on transparency, really, and financial literacy when it comes to college. And they've we've partnered with them because we both know this challenge of making these, how confusing these awards can be. So we take the guesswork out of that and say, okay, here's what the school costs. This is your need-based financial aid or grants, if any. This is the amount that is in merit-based scholarships, if any. And here's what you've been offered in loans. And ultimately, what does that mean for your 
net cost. We want families to be able to compare apples to apples and really understand what offer, what is this school actually going to cost me and actually going to cost our family. And I'll tease the next iteration we have of this part of the platform, but I want to make sure that folks are taking advantage of that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's free. You can upload all the award letters that you want. Anybody that uploads an award letter automatically gets entered into our $2,000 scholarship that, that we're doing. We're going to do a couple of different scholarships for the class 2023, but this one is an OSA scholarship. And all you have to do to throw your hat in the ring is to upload an award letter. And obviously the more, the better there, but that aside, just make sure that you're understanding what you've actually been offered from these schools. One of the biggest questions coming in, Matt, sorry to interrupt, but no, uh, we're getting a ton of these. Uh, is it weird to have not got award your letters yet from schools you are accepted to? Number one, no, it's not weird. Two, I had a client today get a, a letter from the University of Arkansas, and it actually said they haven't even set their tuition rate for next year. So the award letter is going to come after they set that tuition date and they didn't project a date. So I'd say be patient, don't give up. It's not uncommon and don't panic. Matt, anything to add? No, totally. It, it, yeah. So I probably should have led with that, the timing. So I'm glad that you, that you flagged that, Chuck, because th many schools were about two weeks away from the busiest kind of influx of financial aid awards happens between the middle of March and the first week of April. So it's completely normal if you haven't received a financial aid award letter to further complicate this complicated process. I'm sure a lot of you think you have received the award letter when in fact you've only received the acceptance and the scholarship amount. And again, it, it, that's a very common practice where if you've received a merit-based scholarship, they tell you that with the acceptance or shortly thereafter. But unbeknownst to you, it's not the full or complete financial aid award. The cheat code to knowing, hey, did I get a good, or I'm sorry, did I receive my full financial aid offer is if this federal direct student loan is included in there. As soon as you see that federal direct student loan, that again will total $5,500 in most cases, that's when you know, okay, this is my kind of complete financial aid offer. Until then, the assumption should be that it's a that it's that, that it is just your scholarship offer, okay, or your acceptance letter. Totally normal to be confused. Totally normal to feel like, what am I missing? Am I the only one that doesn't have an offer yet? So, no. For many of you, maybe most of you, were getting ahead of this a little bit by addressing it tonight. But we're not far away. It's gonna. It's all happening very soon. OK, the first thing that we want to do when we get an award is we want to gut check this thing Did I get a good award. OK, and let me just uh, and I get to I get to pick on my buddies in my backyard here, Boston College. And again, I for those of you that have followed along here, I always pick on them. They, it's an unbelievable institution. They don't need my help. OK, and it really is an awesome school. And anybody that's going there is going to have an incredible experience. Matter of fact, I saw a couple of BCs on the way here. This is not a, I'm, I'm not dragging them through the mud and they are not the only school that does this, but they typically under award families on average about $10,000, right? And families, again, don't usually have a way to know that. How are you supposed to know? You're not supposed to know. So that's why we want to have this a platform to be able to hold these schools accountable and have a watchdog of sorts, which we consider ourselves to be. But if you, if we are projecting less than you actually receive, that would be a way piece of ammunition that we would want to challenge Boston College or whomever to say that, hey, your net price calculator said that we should be expecting to get $10,000 more than we actually did. Right now. And again, I'm just Chuck, as promised here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tease. This isn't live right now. It will be next week now. But what is live right now in your platform? And for those of you that are already on here, you know this. We're translating your award letters and you can see what we were projecting versus what you actually got. But this next iteration is taking it the next step, right, where we are telling you, OK, for the University of Chicago, what is our likelihood of an appeal? How strong of a case do we have? And of course, for any school that you want to see, but for the University of Chicago, we're saying you have a very strong likelihood of having a successful appeal should you decide to push back. And we think that you should and do that in the right way. And we can drill down a little bit, show us some more info as to say why. Number one, we were projecting that you should have got $5,000 more than you actually did from the University of Chicago. 
okay? The institution's methodology, right? We have a very clear understanding of how these colleges do business. So what that means is that basically schools that use this type of financial aid methodology, generally speaking, there's wiggle room, okay, with that. Family considerations for this particular family, they're two-household family, right? Divorced parents, okay? Oftentimes, there's that's a meaningful piece of ammunition for an appeal. And unique, unique circumstances, obviously, there's a long list here, but this particular family owns their own business. Oftentimes, that can be grounds for an appeal. So again, I, this is something that we're just incredibly excited about. It took a lot, a lot of, quite literally, years to get this thing operational. We should be live, knock on wood, by the end of the week. But even tonight, you can put your actual offers in there and see how we thought you did or thought you would do versus how you actually did. Okay. So I want to make sure that you're taking advantage of that. Okay. We have tons and tons of very specific questions. Okay. I would have to, on a lot of these, be able to, in the time we have, log into and look at a lot of different information. So unfortunately, if it's very specific, I'm not necessarily going to be able to get to it on the Q&A. We can try, some of them might get answered. You can always ask to schedule an hour with one of one of the CAP experts and we might be able to dig in a little deeper. If it's simple, I will take a swing at answering it, but when there's a lot of it, you're just gonna have to bear with me. Yeah, no, and listen, I keep shooting your shot, guys. For a lot of these, it's, it's almost irresponsible of us to be able to try to, if it's really specific, to provide recommendations without having more context. Yeah. And unfortunately, we can't do that for everybody tonight. A lot of times, like, okay, let us look at your FAFSA and your and what you submitted to these schools. Tell us more about this business. What is your family dynamics? Tell us about this rental property or your home equity. These are how your income has fluctuated over the last couple of years. So we're not trying to dismiss you. It's just we can only we have to keep it relatively high level tonight. I feel I still think we're going to provide enough value that everybody's. Oh, feeling pretty good, but but that's just the reality. And Chuck, if you can, do me a favor, go dig up on our website, the, the registration for our office hours, because that's another yep. free resource where every other Monday, it's usually Chuck and Dan or me or Peg, or we just, it's similar to tonight where we just hang out for an hour, but we're just answering questions. That's the deal. We'll talk about what's going on in the world, but we're just there to answer questions. That's another great kind of free resource that we offer everybody. So you know, should we always appeal, right? We get this question a lot. Is it ever a waste of time? Could we ever hurt ourselves? Generally speaking, there there's exceptions, but they're incredibly few. Your worst case scenario in appealing for additional financial aid and or scholarships is that the college says, sorry, we did the best we could with the initial offer, take it or leave it. That's your worst case scenario, again, with very few exceptions, okay? And just going right to the, well, is it ever a waste of time? Maybe. Generally speaking, again, state schools, specifically the flagship universities, especially if they are in-state, it's very cookie cutter. It's black and white. What the formula says is what you get, okay? Generally speaking, now, if you've had something, some type of God forbid situation, or in your base income year, you had a one-time distribution, or there's been a job loss, or there's been a change in marital status since you completed the FAFSA. Those kind of really significant kind of tangible pieces that we can bring back to these state schools, then we have a really a reasonable expectation to have a successful appeal. But again, from a high level the expectation that I set is state schools, unless we have something really firm to go back to them with probably a take it or leave it type of deal. Okay. Now, again, worst case scenario, you're out a, a little bit of sweat equity. Okay. Good candidates, just to rattle off a few private colleges, I'm always bullish. I'm always bullish as if it's a private school, I expect to win if it's them. COVID's still sticking around a little bit. It's got to be bumped down further on the list here, but it's still a thing. If we've had a, a retirement distribution or if we've had a rollover, these are things that we can appeal for successfully. If we have a, a an underfunded, a lower retirement than the national average based on the age of our parents, that's something that we can poke holes in. If we are divorced, separated, remarried, if we have any dynamics like this, if we are a, a a single parent, this is usually something that we can leverage to our advantage. But this one's, we're getting a little bit technical here, but or 
private schools that use the federal methodology or schools that use the institutional methodology in general, usually those are opportunities to appeal. Again, how are you supposed to know that? It's That's something that where you would have to drill down. If you click on, click on the college in my cap and you click on that financial aid tab that I clicked on earlier, it will tell you the is it public, private, and more importantly, what is the methodology that they used to calculate financial aid? Is it institutional or a federal methodology school? Okay. Business owners is generally something that we can poke holes in. If you are a business owner, most colleges, specifically private colleges, are going to make some assumptions that are usually not fair, and usually we can push back on those. And then, of course, better offers from competing colleges, right? That's something we talk about all the time, especially for those that, that have been following along for a while. We always say, hey, if you know you want to apply to up here in the Northeast, uh, WPI, Worcester, Polytech, Worcester Polytech Institute, if you're a great engineer and you hated RPI, Rensselaer Polytech, I would make you apply to RPI just because we're going to leverage those schools against one another. And this is when we do it, right? This is the part of the process when we do that. So those are a couple of good candidates. And I'm not going to read all these bullet points, guys. Like I said, everybody's going to get, everybody's going to get these follow-ups here. But I think some of the, again, big takeaways are just knowing which institution are we appealing for. And I think I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but for the state schools, we are less... Let me put a little caveat in there. If it's a state school, our odds go up, okay? Because these state schools, obviously, they love the out-of-state dollars. So sometimes we can at least, if we're out-of-state, eat into those margins a little bit. They're a little bit more likely to play. Let's make a deal. But again, generally speaking, it's the private schools that tend to be more willing to move the needle than the public schools. Okay. And again, same thing here, guys. I won't hit every bullet point, but I want to hit the top one and I want to hit the bottom one. Now, if you went early decision, okay, I think maybe there's a, I'm sure there's a percentage of you that went early decision and maybe you're listening to this going, we're screwed and we have to take whatever we get because we have no leverage and we can't use other schools as leverage, which is true. You can't in, a, in an early decision just by quick way of Quick kind of recap, early action is when we apply early, but we are not obligated to attend any one institution. Early decision, we have to sign a contract saying if we get accepted into your school, we're going there. However, it is now true at every college that offers ED in the fine print, I've been, which probably I, most of you did not read, I would never read it, but I, this is the one fine print that I actually have read, is one of the reasons you can back out of this contract, these ED contracts, is if you can't afford the that institution, if you can't afford the offer that is given you after acceptance, and you get to decide that as the family, not the college. So a particular piece of leverage that we've been utilizing with a fair amount of success, even in ED appeals, is to basically say that, hey, it, again, this, is, this won't be the only bullet that we'll use, but Oftentimes, the biggest piece of ammunition we have is to say, hey, if we don't get X amount more dollars, and, and we're not going to overextend ourselves too much, but if we don't get X amount more, we're not going to be able to commit. We're going to have to break this contract, which, of course, we don't want to. We went early decision for a reason. But in reading the contract, it says if we can afford it, we can back out no harm, no foul, and we might be forced to do that if we don't get some additional help here. I'll talk about the tone a little bit as we close tonight. That might sound like hardball or whatever, and that's not the that's not the tone here, right? That's not, it, this is a little bit of a different negotiation than when you're going to buy a car or home or whatever, your other investments where that's you want to have the mindset that these folks, they're looking at it go, going, is this somebody that I want to work with for the next four years? Is this somebody that I want to try to help them realize their kid's dream? Or does this seem like a jerk that's trying to strong arm me? So the tone does matter. The process does matter, which I'll talk about a little bit. But nonetheless, that language, however it comes across, is important to be included there. Okay. And then the last one is, where do we appeal? And this is an interesting one that, again, in my experience, is not common knowledge. Now, we could appeal for additional need-based financial aid and or additional merit-based scholarships, right? And, and sometimes both. It's not uncommon that we will do both, 
Okay. But generally speaking, as a general rule of thumb, if we are applying for additional merit-based scholarships, we are doing that through the admissions office. And generally speaking, it is the student that's going to be the loudest voice in the room. We want the student to drive that conversation. Okay. The, admiss the admissions counselor is focused on having that student in the school, not their parents, not the whole family. They're investing in the student. Okay. Whereas if it's a need-based financial aid appeal, Generally speaking, that happens with the financial aid office. And generally speaking, those types of conversations make sense to come from the parents. When we're talking about our base income year and our one-time retirement distribution and, hey, what are these deductions that you weren't counting on my in my S-Corp? Those conversations make more sense to come from the parents, right? But I think that's an important distinction and can absolutely matter in terms of your likelihood of having an effective appeal. Another one that's, I have to apologize. I replied to answer live and I meant to type it. It is, just a second, let me find it. Can I get a parent plus loan even if that isn't included in my offer? In general, everybody should be able to get a parent plus loan subject to a credit check. If for some reason you rejected, you might even be able to get then a small additional amount on the federal direct student loans, right? Matt, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but I would say, yeah, you should be able to get that if you've completed the FAFSA, signed it as a parent and complete the credit check. Yeah, 100%, right? You nailed it. Yeah. it even it, most financial aid offers, thank God, don't include a parent plus loan as part of that offer. But everybody is, every institution accepts the plus loan, right? It is the federal government program for parents that are borrowing to put their kids through college. So you can 100% apply to it for it. Like Chuck said, you're not guaranteed. There is a credit check of all the loans out there. It's the most lenient in terms of what credit is required. So if you don't have strong credit, for some parents, that may be your only option, or it might be on the short list, or some, certainly something that should be considered. But another important thing to note there is that just because it's offered in the financial aid application, or even if it's not, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the best solution for your family. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's the only solution for your family, right? Another problem I have with those plus loans being offered in the financial aid award letters is, th is that ins it insinuates, in my opinion, that's what loan that family should take if they need to borrow money. Sometimes they're going to get it right. Sometimes they're not, right? So anybody that needs to borrow, please just put a pin in that for right now. I promise you the only thing we're going to be talking about after May 1st, right up until those you, you pay your bills this summer, is loans and how to pay your bill, okay? We're too early right now, even though I'm sure, so, and I know some of you are freaked out and that makes a ton of sense in terms of like, how am I going to get this dollar amount by August 1st, Right. The timing when it comes to federal, sorry, when it comes to loans and college is really quick. It's not like doing a refi or trying to qualify for a, a mortgage loan. It's It happens really quick. And again, in next year's rates and repayment terms haven't even been released yet. So we don't even know what to recommend, the pros and cons of each option just yet. But I promise you we're going to, and that's all we'll talk about for two months this spring. So just sit tight. I promise you and just continue to follow along with us. We'll hope we'll have very firm recommendations in the coming months, but and know you're going to have options. Okay. And to your point, check if you are denied a plus loan, there's two things you can do. Number one, just like other loans, you can get a co-signer. They call it an endorser, right? If anybody else would be willing to be on that with you. The other kind of perk about being denied a plus loan is that the student automatically becomes eligible to borrow $4,000 more just under their name, which they don't need a co-signer. They don't need to establish credit, nothing. Okay. This is probably where I'm going to spend the most time tonight on one particular slide because it's, and feel free to, assuming we continue to get some good questions here, Chuck, interrupt me. I got two to throw in before sure. you get started on the slide. Should we hear back on an appeal before accepting admittance? I believe you have to commit to the UC schools before they get back to you regarding an appeal. And then on the same topic, when is the best time to appeal? I feel if we wait to receive all our offers, they will have given away all their funds before I appeal. So those two kind of, I think, falling well with this slide. Yeah, it's a great question. And, then, and here's where there's some art and there's some science here, right? The firm recommendation, do not accept the offer until after you've gone through your appeal, okay? Colleges absolutely look at that. The appeal committee will say, with few exceptions, that these guys accept their offer yet. 
that'll be a part of the conversation that they have internally. We know that, right? We have a lot of financial aid counselors on our team, right? The director of financial aid at Harvard, director of financial aid at MIT, the director of the scholarship office at the University of Oklahoma, former director of financial aid at Denison University. We And these are the folks that you can meet with should you choose to, and they're unbelievable, actually, because again, they have worked on that. They know the secret sauce, right? And they know things like that to be like, do not accept the offer until you've gone through the appeal process. Now, some of these schools will create a lot of urgency with a timeline. Some of them might say, especially if you went ED or you went early action, we want to know before May 1st. And we want to know within two weeks. The first thing I always recommend is call to ask for call to say we're formally appealing for additional financial aid and or scholarships. And we like to ask for an extension on our deposit. Most schools will give you an extension, right? Because you're specifically saying, and it's a great way to start the we can't say the word negotiation, but it's a great way to start the negotiation is to say, we can't accept this offer until we've gone through the appeal process. So please give us an extension, right? From a timing standpoint, it's you, again, every school is different. It's like we always say, but generally speaking, these appeals take about two weeks for folks to get back to you. And again, generally speaking, the expectation is they're going to get back with the appeal result before you have to make that deposit. Okay. Unless you, the other, and again, the UCs, just to say the UCs, usually again, unless we have some heavy ammunition, we're not going to expect them to budge. And then the second question, Chuck, is escaping me right now. What was the second one? So the first one was, oh, the second one was, do we have to wait till we have all our right, offers right, to right, appeal? Right. I'm afraid yeah. if I wait for all, they'll run out of funds. Yeah. So short answer is no, you do not have to wait for all of them, but sometimes there, there are a few reasons that we will hold back. The first one that's, I think, more obvious and easy to make a call on as folks going through this, presumably for the first time, is that so long as you have, it, it, listen, if you have some, what you think is legitimate ammunition for why you'd be able to appeal for more, like we had a 2021 was a particularly good year. We didn't we we didn't have th that high of an income the year before or since, and we can document that. That's huge ammunition for an appeal. We've had a change in marital status. Huge ammunition for appeal. We've lost a job, right? If you have something like that, no reason to wait. Okay. If you also have somewhat comparable school in which you've received a more generous offer, bombs away. We're ready to go. We only need one to be that, that's a more generous offer. If we don't feel like we have some of that really tangible ammunition, we don't have a better offer from a relatively comparable school, we're probably going to sit tight. Okay. And just wait to see how the other results come in to hopefully create some of that leverage for ourselves. The more nuanced one, and this one again is this goes in the art, and this is where we have to rely on the folks on our staff and kind of plug into the network that we have access to is that some schools, I'll pick on Providence College from last year, and this isn't a bad thing, this is just the deal. They would not budge on appeals early in the year, early in the season, because they're, they had such high volume in applications and so many students were accepting offers that they were way ahead of their quota, so to speak, in terms of filling beds. So all the applicants to Providence had little to no leverage. So even with a lot of ammunition, they're saying, sorry, take it or leave it. We got tens of thousands or whatever, thousands of applicants behind you that'll pay what their offer that we put in front of them was or, or pay full sticker price. That was the beginning of the year. Towards the end is May 1st approach. Like the, the, the tables had turned, right? And they all of a sudden were behind their quota. And now they're throwing money at everybody just to be able to fill their bed. So those are the ones that are much more nuanced that we have to tap into particular schools to get an idea of where their headcount is in the year where sometimes we'll advise our families, guys, sit tight. We're going to hold off on the appeal for right now. So again, that one is, I can't tell you where to go to a website there or anything like that, but that's, but in terms of timing, that's where it can be a little bit nuanced. Okay. So how to appeal for the best pack pass possible package. Let's knock these out quickly before we talk about next steps and how and where to engage us from here. This is something that I mentioned, the director of, of, of Harvard Financial Aid that's been with us for a long time now, help us put this together a long time ago, probably over a decade ago, and it's evolved. It obviously looks very simple, and it is in a lot of ways, but I want to unpack a few of these. 
He always tells us the first and foremost, that always seemed obvious to me. Make sure that you bring color and background to the story. When you, and especially Chuck, you've met Ryan Callahan. This is like the most serious dude. He like his personality is like a calculator. Okay. And like, I can say that because we're buddies and <laughs> and I tell him that to his face, but he's, you know me, he's, I'm representative of, I think a lot of my peers, like we're, we crunch numbers, right? And it's, and we work for these institutions that employ us. Okay. And we have to be profitable institutions and whatever the numbers show is usually, you know, what we put out there. He's like, what makes my job so much harder is when somebody picks up the phone and says the best day of our life was when we got accepted into our daughter's dream school. The worst day was two weeks later when we got the offer. And we're thinking about, we might have to go tell our daughter she can't attend the school that she's earned the right to attend with 18 years of hard work. He's that's your first goal is to get them motivated to want to go to bat for you, right? And that's the tone. Brian, I'm not asking for the world here, man. I'm just trying to find out a way to make this happen for my kid. Okay. That this is my job, my responsibility as a parent. They did their job and they earned acceptance into the school. We want to ask for a specific amount in most cases. Okay, we did our homework. We crunched our numbers. We figured out if you guys can come up with another $7,000, we'll sign the dotted line. It's still going to be a huge stretch for us. It's still going to be a huge stretch for us, but that'll get us there. Okay, again, we talked about this a lot. This is where we want to have leverage. This is where we want to have competing offers. We don't want to consider our second choice, but we have to. It's just the reality of our family. Here's the offer, as you can see, right? We show them the offer. Here's the offer that we got, okay? This one is a little bit of a, is a PhD level part of appealing, okay? And this is especially relevant for business owners. It's irrelevant. It's relevant for everybody, but especially business owners. Most of these private colleges, they get your tax returns, not because they want to verify what you put on financial aid applications. They want to see what you wrote off. They want to look at your expenses, right? And they are admittedly, not, or not necessarily publicly, but they will tell you we are way stricter than the IRS, right? You're going to say, okay, I'm a contractor and I wrote off my pickup truck and I wrote off some of my other equipment. And they're going to say, eh, we don't buy that. So we're not counting that right off that the IRS had no problem with for $20,000. So we're going to add that onto your income, untaxed income, because it wasn't taxed. And that's going to give you a higher EFC and we're going to give you less in need-based grants. How are you supposed to know that they're making those judgment calls? You have no idea. So that's why you have to call them on it directly, especially if you're a business owner. Did you not count some of the deductions that the IRS said were perfectly legitimate? And if you didn't, I want to challenge them. And I can almost guarantee you, you will have a successful appeal if you're able to get there. Okay. Be persistent, right? Good old fashioned persistence. Actually, we need to make sure it makes it back on here. We want to demonstrate interest. We also want to be kind, right? Again, and Ryan will tell you, he makes judgment calls. Do I, and just like all his peers, do I want to have a relationship with this person? over the next several years. So you have to come at it from that place. And again, I, we talked about specifically on the admission side that we want the student to have, if it's not the loudest voice in the room, certainly we want them to have a presence, right? It's them that's going to the school. They want to see financial aid counselors and admissions counselors want to see that the student is invested in this thing, that they get it. Five, 10 years back, it was like this well-kept secret that you could even appeal for more consideration. Right. Whereas now it's more just how knowable all information is. It's more families know it's a thing, right? Not everybody, but more families know it's a thing. What's less common, so automatically puts you in a smaller kind of pool, is when the students have a voice here, right? And these 17 and 18 year olds that are making this their first kind of massive adult decision are involved here. That's the, it, our data shows the higher odds for more successful and results. And this is just one from a couple months ago here. Here's the initial offer that we got at Occidental, right? And you can see the what we're highlighting here. We got 34 grand initially. And after going through an appeal, we got another almost 30,000 more dollars. Now, obviously we're showing a very successful appeal here, but the point is that if you play your cards, it can happen. Right. And we push back. And there, this wasn't a crazy one. This is one where we challenge how they valued our primary residence. Right. We're homeowners. We challenge how they valued our primary residence. And we challenged that we should have to, that they would expect us to access that 
equity in our home at all to the tune of 30,000 plus dollars, right? And again, this is not the expectation I would set. Our averages, our numbers show that we work with families, we get $10,000 or more on average. Now, I'll go on record to say that that's more than the expectation I would set. Huge wins like this. And we had a $50,000, somewhat Dan's $50,000 win from last week, Chuck. I'm forgetting the school. I want to say like Vanderbilt or Chicago, a very good school. I forget which one, but those bump our averages up quite nicely. But with few exceptions, I expect to be able to get, if we work with a family, another three, four, five thousand more dollars anyways. But I think those are almost, I don't know, probably bearish expectations to to set. Now, can I interject again? Oh, if you're, sorry, if you're wrapping up. Um, a common theme, a lot of people are saying that they're not seeing the functionality that you showed yet earlier. So will that be available tomorrow yeah. or on, on a login, log out type situation? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, then, so guys, sorry, sorry. This is just... This functionality is just in the stage section, okay? Which means, sorry, it's like our, it's not live to the public yet. This is like the dress rehearsal part of the platform that we're still testing internally so far. Testing is going very well. That's why we expect to be live no later than Monday. So it should be live there. But what you do have live, the functionality that is, a, is available live now is that you can upload the award letters. We will translate them. And then if the, your college isn't already in here, we are projecting at least the net costs here. So you should be able to see, okay, what did CAP project versus what did I actually get, right? And then again, drill down and say, okay, what's their average scholarship at this school versus what did I actually get and or what federal methodology do they use, et cetera. But yeah, sorry for the confusion. And I, I probably got ahead of myself to tease that. I'm just... <laughs> If you can't tell, a little bit excited to get that baby live. But again, I really barring the unexpected six days, that thing will be live. But I, I still think there's a lot of value we can provide even before that thing's cooking. So I want to talk oh, about... Can we expand on that one last thing? A lot of schools use a portal to communicate their offer. They don't issue an official letter. How's the best way to upload something like that to the system? Yeah, you should be able to just take a screenshot and upload the JPEG. We can read those. Yeah, but good question. That's exactly right. Okay, let me So, uh, Sorry, I guess I lost my spot, but let me... Oh, I think I know what I did. I went too far. Yeah, so again, everybody will get the slides, but let me make a couple firm recommendations about what I want you guys to do here. And as promised, we always have a, a deal for those folks that attend live with us. My firm recommendation is book an hour with us. Okay, do it tonight and you'll get 20% off for 240 bucks. What you will get is you'll get access to our platform for a year, all the bells and whistles, but you'll get an hour with one of us, whether it's me, whether it's Chuck, whether it's Ryan at Harvard, Josh at MIT, whether it's Peg, it doesn't matter who you end up with. And we all collaborate, right? Chuck knows that we all collaborate together and on on these types of on these types of things. But we want to look at your offers. We want to see how you did. We'll want to look at your FAFSA, your CA. We want to help you figure out how to go back to these schools and get more money. Again, our averages, we do 10,000 bucks on average more. So it's a very, I think, sound investment. If you don't feel like you got your money's worth, 100% refund, no questions asked. This is being recorded. You'll have it. You can say, Matt said, if I didn't get my money's worth, I was going to get my money back and I'm willing to I'm hold myself out for that. So that's what I would recommend. If you have an account already, upgrade to the Val Victorian. And even if you don't book your appointment tonight, just upgrade to that so you can actually have it for whenever you get your award. So if you don't have your award yet, just upgrade to the Val Victorian tonight. Or if you already have that, you just Click this, talk to an expert tonight. Purchase it. The If you can put in the chat, the what is it? Appeal 20 is the coupon yeah. code, right? So all caps, appeal 20. Again, click the talk to an expert or buy the Valorant and you'll have an hour with any one of us. Obviously, you can use whatever you want with that hour, but obviously for most folks, the, the focus is on appeals, is going back to these schools and getting more money. And again, if our batting average is very high. So it's very rare that people don't get great return on that investment. And if you don't, you know where to find us and we're not going to give you a hard time. We'll we'll give you your money back and send you on your way. And, and that'll be that. But that that is my firm recommendation. And I know I'm pushing you guys hard, but that's because that's because I believe in what we're going to be able to do for you here. And let me just see if I have 
Anything else in closing here, Chuck? Any more? I'll look at, I'll dive in here myself and see if there's any other questions that I know I want to hit, but any others that are, everybody's going to get the recording again, guys. Everybody's going to get the slide deck tomorrow. They are asking specifically, how do we upload our our award letter to be entered in the scholarship drawing? Yeah. So how you do that is just in your MyCap platform, right? If you go down to compare and appeal, Here is where you upload your award letters and you just type in the college. All right, so just give me for one sec. So I'll type in Fairfield. Okay, and then you upload the particular file. And then we'll tell you for if you are not sure if it's a full financial aid award letter or not hit this translate offer letter, or if it's just a scholarship offer, you can try to put it in there. If it doesn't work nine times out of 10, the reason why it didn't work is because it's just a scholarship offer as opposed to your full financial aid award letter. And obviously when you see the success there, you know that it has been successfully uploaded. You hit save and you are entered into our scholarship offer right there. Then another theme that's coming up quite a bit is with the FAFSA changes and the EFC split, what are your thoughts if we have multiple children either enrolled or beginning to enroll? Is there a way to ask to be grandfathered? Does it matter state schools versus institutional schools? Yeah, it definitely matters, right? So built into the platform when we're projecting our four-year net costs, we are looking at are you going to have siblings overlapping? What are inflation rates happening over these four years? Now, we already have built into this platform. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to get another link. I know I'm not sharing right now, but we already have those FAFSA rules baked in here. Most schools have not formally made a decision yet. Okay. But the basic feedback that we are getting is that if you, and you guys will see, is that for the public schools that use the federal methodology, they're going to follow the department of education and they are not going to, that that sibling rule is going away. Okay. Now what I am popping into the chat is this link right here. I started a petition to try to stop this sibling rule from happening. We've got 65,000 signatures, which is great, but basically big dogs on Capitol Hill are telling us, unless you get 100,000 signatures, this thing's going through. And even if we do, it's probably still going through, but they're like, that's until you get 100,000 signatures, that's the only dream you have of potentially having this sibling discount go away. Now, the public schools are very likely and the federal methodology schools very likely to just follow whatever the Department of Education does. So as of right now, it's not good. And the cost of college is going to double for a lot of these families that have more than one kid in school at once. Most of the institutional methodology schools, the feedback that we are getting is that they're going to ignore this rule and continue to give a discount. It's not as generous as the federal discount, but they are going to continue to give a discount for families that have more than one kid in school. So certainly Ryan can speak for Harvard and Josh from MIT and their kind of peer schools. Obviously, that's the creme de la creme. But most schools that use the institutional methodology, the general feedback has been that they're going to continue to give breaks for those that have more than one kid in school at once. But yeah, thank you for flagging that question. And please, if I shared that link, please sign it. Please share it, especially if it's applicable to your family. Okay. Okay, guys, I think we, yeah, and anybody, even if you have offered or even if you have up- uploaded awards previously, you are automatically in the drawing. We, we actually announced this scholarship just recently, the last week or so, but we can go back retroactively and we have to account for families that have already uploaded awards. In terms of the timing, we don't have a firm date for when we're going to announce it. It'll likely be in in somewhere in the mid-May to early, early June range thereabouts after our kind of May 1st acceptances and the dust has settled a little bit. But yeah, action items tonight, guys. I know I'm pushing you here, but it's because I believe in what we're doing. And I really think that we can, whatever offer you get, make it better. And that coupon expires at midnight here. Even if you're thinking about it, book it, 
and make sure you take advantage of that. We'll do some type of coupon code in the fall tomorrow, but it won't be 20%. I promise you that. Don't overthink that one would be my advice. And I tried to do the best I could on answering via email, but I can only type so fast and there's a lot I didn't get to. So I do apologize to everybody. If I didn't get to yours or it seemed incomplete, I'm sorry. I did the best I can. It's not a knock on you, Chuck. It's a credit to the crowd tonight. Great question. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you already have a subscription, but you would like an hour meeting, just get, log on to your platform and go to the upgrade. It'll say upgrade here, I think, as opposed to talk to an expert. I'm already on the, I think, Val Victorian package. So if I want to book another hour, I'll hit talk to an expert. But if you're already here, you should see upgrade and just hit the it, it, yeah hit the talk to an expert button. Yeah, it, anytime we see the word grant, it is not a loan. That is free money that is coming right off the top. Yeah, if you've already sent a deposit, you can certainly still appeal for more. You, we know, as I mentioned earlier, we've lost some leverage, but it doesn't mean the dream is dead or it doesn't mean you shouldn't at least try. Okay. And I'm just scrolling w- real quick here, guys. Another theme is our confidentiality angle to sharing one college's offer with another. In general, I think when we appeal and you're using those competing schools that Matt mentioned earlier, I think it's always best to share those offers. Matt, anything to add on that? No, yeah, and you can redact. When it comes to confidentiality stuff, you can always redact personal information if you want. Although if you're talking to the college, they got everything. They got all the goods already. <laughs> but now if you're worried about like other colleges talking or something like that, not at all. Believe me, they know the game. Okay. Okay. And I, and I think that's about it, guys. We got to cut off here, but really outstanding questions. I know it's, I know it's a lot and I'm sorry we couldn't get to every question, but hopefully you know how to interact with us for here. For free resources, you have the office hours that you can access us. Sign up for those if you haven't. We'll continue to put out content like this all the time. I know we're doing another appeal presentation in two weeks and probably another one in April after the IV acceptances come out. But again, if you, anything that you want that's a little bit more personal than that, book an hour and we'll make sure it's worth your time. Chuck, I enjoyed having you on, man. I'm glad these guys put you through the ringer. May you earn it down there. No yeah. problem. I appreciate you having me. Happy to answer any questions, especially if you're in Texas or around Houston. Reach out to me directly if you want, or if you need to book an hour, do it through CAP, my CAP. Yep, totally, guys. And uh, yeah, happy to help. Appreciate the kind words in the comment section here. And uh, hey, we're pulling you. Believe me, we're on your team, guys. We're pulling for you when it's us against them. Yep. All right, take care, guys.